This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Hey there, buddy! New tips unlocked. Split personality and at the 7th mark. Is that where she's going to be stalking us? Achievement unlocked. Reign of apologies. Okay, surely we're close to the end now, right? Surely we are. よく貧乏な人がお金持ちになった自分を想像するという現実逃避ってありますよね。これも多重人格なわけですか。極論はできませんが、抗議的には総解釈できます。つまり誰にでもあり得る現象なのです。その現実逃避の見境がなくなると二重人
I smiled wryly at the thought of using a vague word like probably right before contradicting it with definitely. Then I paused my mental replay as a chill ran down my spine. There was definitely a presence like a shadow behind me. There was a terror unlike any other. If a presence really had manifested behind me, I would definitely have turned around to check for it. But the world had moved on, and there was no way for me to turn around. While carrying this frightening shadow on my back, I was gleefully running around the store searching for a case of noodles. Running for the instant noodle section, bad-mouthing my mom. But there was that presence constantly at my back, sticking to me like a shadow. No way to see what it was. Realizing it now, after the fact, was horrifying and repulsive. In that moment of time, I was running around gleefully, carrying the cardboard box. Tip-tap! But listening to that moment again, I could hear the footsteps other than mine going pit-pat with every step. Tip-tap, tip-tap, tip-tap. Pit-pat, pit-pat, pit-pat. Tap-tap, tip-tap, tap. Pit-pat, pit-pat. Tip-tap, tip-tap. Pit-pat, pit-pat. While I was running, the sound of those barefoot steps going in <laughs> pit-pat were right behind mine. Me running around gleefully in that closed-off moment in time. But I didn't hear it. No, I heard it. That's why I remembered it. I didn't think I had heard anything. That's why I didn't turn around. Which is why I didn't turn around! In that moment, the pit-pat of those footsteps was following me the entire time. I couldn't run faster and escape. I couldn't run any faster than I had at that time. I couldn't run around. I hadn't turned around before, not once. Then I returned to my parents and started talking. The shadow-like presence was right at my back. Since I didn't move, the shadow didn't move. That's why it made no sound. That was all. At that time, I hadn't taken a single step while talking to my parents. I was just standing there. This was undeniable. And yet... I heard it. A pit-pat. That shouldn't be. If I took three steps, it followed three steps. Wasn't that the rule? There was no sound other than that. At that time, the entire world had gone dark. A sudden darkness. It was the end of my reflective journey. I was tired. I wanted to end it. Someone turn on the light. Except my body wouldn't move. As if I was sewn into that moment in time. Pit-pat. My past self's hair stood on end. That's impossible! Now that's just breaking the rules. I haven't moved. So you shouldn't be moving either. I couldn't move. So you shouldn't be able to move either. Follow the rules. Pit pat. Yet that sound echoed in the darkness once again. The hair on the back of my neck prickled up on end. It was so close. It was hard to tell whether it was touching my hair or not. Why couldn't I move? Just like how the presence was moving behind me. I quickly realized I could move. It's just that I was scared and didn't want to. But now it was the only time I could turn around. It was something unforgivable in this moment in time. But I needed to turn around immediately. As if my entire being was trying to force me to stop, it began to administer a plan like a needle being stuck into every pore. I'll turn around. I'll turn around. I'm not scared at all. I'll turn around. I'll turn around. I'm not scared at all. A scream I was unable to vocalize. Ugh! I turned around. At first, I couldn't understand the meaning of it. <clears throat> what is this? Just as a person's mouth might bite into an apple, slurp the juices, and finally discover that it was an apple, my mind began to process the scene before my eyes by eating the apple. Munch, 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 munch. Slurp the juices and discover the apple. Meaning, what was in front of me was... Oh, okay, that was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Oh, achievement unlocked for that, though. I don't know why that was included. I think that was the achievement for getting all the tips, so that implies we're at the end. Cool. It is getting pretty late. I guess I'd be lying if I said I didn't get any sleep. I tried to stay awake all night, but there were definitely gaps in my memory. I guess I kept nodding off and jerking awake in a panic all night. I spent all night hugging the metal bat and sat on top of the futon I used to barricade my door. Watching. 
waiting, just in case someone tried to break in through my window. If I left the spot, someone could break in through the door, setting the futon flying and attack me. But if I stopped watching the window, someone could break through the glass and attack me. I tried telling myself that I was just being paranoid. And you are! But I couldn't sleep. The thought of being so vulnerable scared the living daylights out of me. If I slept, and it, that meant taking the risk, I didn't need it. it. I was so much better to just stay awake. At some point during that endless cycle of nodding off and jolting awake, light began to shine outside. But that was it. It wasn't so much the boarding as it was the sun simply having risen. I snuck a peek out of the curtains. Rena was gone. I couldn't see anywhere, no matter how hard I looked. Based on someone else's playlist of the game, there's about two hours left! What? So I'm not going to bed till like 3 a.m., basically. This is why I requested the, uh, technically at this point today off of work. Finally, I could breathe a deep sigh of relief. The night was finally over. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't tired, but I didn't feel like sleeping at the moment. I still had time, but I needed to make my own breakfast, so I'd better get started soon. Skipping school was also an option. With my mom gone, it'd be easy to play hooky. Honestly, I debated it. The risk involved with leaving my house was incalculable. So staying holed up in here was probably my safest option. But staying here wouldn't solve anything. We see San said that he wouldn't help without a cold, hard evidence. Neither he, nor my parents. So, unless I find some sort of proof, these relentless nights would never end. I stretched my body, tilted my head back, and closed my eyes, just like I did every morning. I re regulated my breathing, and regained my senses. Calm down, Keiichi Maibara. Let's go to school. Let's wait until they set their trap for me. But that didn't mean I was just going to twiddle my thumbs. I needed to avoid that trap and secure irrefutable evidence. Take note of the plates of any car that drives by. If I see someone suspicious, check their clothes and face. I wasn't just protecting myself, I was preparing myself to turn their attack against them and retaliate. The tension was similar to when two samurai were both aiming to slay each other with a single motion as they drew their katanas. I was not at a disadvantage. I would have a chance to retaliate. I finally felt a bit of courage growing in my chest. Alright, let's go to school. I tightened my grip on the Satoshi's bat. He was the only partner I could truly count on. Satoshi, please lend me your strength. And entrust your dying regrets to me, since you were probably murdered. I'll make sure I dispel them. Yeah, this is not going to end well. With renewed resolve, I checked the clock. It was still early. Of course I was going to school by myself today. If I didn't want to run into Rena or Mion, I needed to leave now. How did this guy's life turn into this? Like, how? The shattered fragments of the cupboard were still strewn all over the entryway. Right. I meant to clean that up last night, but I never got around to it with the phone call and everything. If my parents come back and saw this while I was at school, I would never hear the end of it. Still, I'd be wasting my time if I cleaned it up right now, and considering what would happen if I ran into Rena or Mion, it wouldn't be too late to clean it up after I got back home. Making extra certain that the doors were locked, I left the house. My uniform was still covered in mud from yesterday, so I left it in the washer. Today, I was going to school in a tracksuit. By wearing a different outfit this morning, my mind was forced to accept that today was different from yesterday. I had a hunch. Today might be the day I get killed. Keep your guard up, Keiichi Maibara. The only one here who gets to decide if today is my last is me. Yeah, this guy is a lunatic. I spent the morning practicing my swing like it was my natural routine. After a while, Rena arrived at school. Our eyes met, but she said nothing. Rena said nothing about last night, as if it never happened. But I could see that those events were real by the wounds carved into her fingers. I just heard her telling Satoko and the others that the bandages were from hurting herself in the kitchen. Though it wasn't like it bothered me. The details that Oisi-san shared with me about Rena's incident before her transfer played vividly in my mind. 
Now that I knew about it, I couldn't even dream of Rena as a cute ideal girl. It was Mion. I had already sensed her approach, so I wasn't that surprised. Mion ka. I gave her a curt reply without my usual jokes. Then I gave the bat an even larger swing, tacitly keeping me on from getting any closer. I think Mion got the message, but she still urged me to give it a rest. I swung the bat even harder as a sign of my refusal. Yep. I ignored Mion and kept swinging. Normally, she'd get mad or bored and leave if someone gave her the cold shoulder like this. But Mion just stood there, waiting patiently for me to stop swinging. I didn't sense any hostility. But we were at school, in plain view. I doubt she'd suddenly attack me here. Or was that too naive? Still, I was starting to get tired. Maybe it wouldn't be so bad to take a break and hear her out. Sweat poured for me as I stopped swinging. I noticed my shoulders were heaving as I breathed. I cursed my lack of exercise. At this rate, I might not be able to move as needed when the time came. I should probably keep practicing my swings to build stamina in addition to the excuse for carrying the bat around with me. I'm only dealing with you right now because I judge the situation to be safe. Take, talking to you alone and away from the others? That's out of the question. Mion was uncharacteristically trying to choose her words. But unlike Uisi-san, it didn't look like she was going to talk about something that I'd rather not hear. Mion was puzzled, trying to find the right thing to say. But then she gave a hearty laugh to break herself out of that mire. <laughs> she got straight to the point. Her request was so frank, I didn't understand it for a moment. I had already stopped swinging to listen to her, hadn't I? It took me some time to understand what she was asking for. What's wrong with swinging a bat? Well, I think you are, and that's the issue. Mion said it flat out. This didn't make any sense, and this was really irritating. <laughs> Mion was at a loss for words. But she finally made up her mind and spoke. Though she stuttered as she said it. Mion grew uncharacteristically flustered. That made it all too clear that the transfer was a lie. Ooh, you're just coming out and saying it. Mion couldn't hide her reaction as my words shook her up. Unable to respond to that, Mion fell silent. Satoshi 
素振りそれも失踪の直前に<笑>これってさお社様のたたりに合う前兆ってわけなのかミオンパニックと思ってる頼むよケイちゃんお社様の話はうかつにしないでよ I don't care about that demon. 私はそんなに信じてないからいいけどさ他のみんなはすごく信じてるレナなんかやばいくらいにやばいくらいにとにかく<笑> I forgot about that face みんな怖がってるんだよもしもこれが悪ふざけならやめな Well you know what the efforts are scaring me with their lizard eyes and you don't hear me complain Oh wait サトシの真似は絶対にやめて I was the one to who I was scared Who do I have to thank for taking me up,、uh, taking up this bat in the first place? But it is still unsettling to me, knowing that my actions were overlapping with Satoshi's. It would be one thing if someone suggested it, but I thought I was making my own decisions. I don't know anything about Satoshi. 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 You know what? I at least appreciate that Kiichi is finally coming out and being like, Look, you guys have been hiding all this stuff from me. I know about it. And this is part of the reason I'm acting so weird. ミオンはないって言ったじゃないかバラバラ殺人があったのによ嘘つきやろごごめん you, I got news for you bro you lied to them too like a lot <laughs> 仲間ってのは隠し事なんかなしだろケイチロックンのミラーそうだろじゃあお前らは仲間じゃないケケイちゃん、oh, そんなのってミオン looks helpless and flustered. Was I imagining the tears in her eyes? I don't see them. I never could have imagined m i o n acting like this. Ah, so then, send it to me, my no hagi. Are you my cat? She got it. Okay, Keiichi's gone full, like, I don't care. I'm throwing everything out right now. Yeah, Tana, don't you know? Oh my god. Lenaka. What does she? Oh, she admitted it to it so easily. I couldn't help but be surprised at how easy that was. You put a needle in! That's not just a prank, bro! Mion gave me a wry smile mixed with confusion, causing even more anger to well up inside me. I grabbed Mion by the collar and lifted her. Oh my gosh! Whoa! Alright, that's going way too far, bro. That wasn't the same as putting Tabasco sauce in a piece of mochi. It was a needle! A sewing needle! If I had swallowed that and it lodged in my throat, what did she think would happen? Mion's face froze as her body rattled in fear. This wasn't the Mion Sonazaki I knew anymore. Wow! 俺のことは当分放っておいてもらうぜいいなミオン wasn't replying anymore 俺を消そうとしても簡単にはいかないからなお前らは最初から警察に疑われてんだサトシを消せたように簡単に消せると思うなよ I said it clearly This was my declaration of war 俺も過去の事件はお前らが怪しいと思った I don't know how you think that We were. Okay, is he only thinking about the previous incidents? Because I'm still mainly thinking of the Tomatake one. Where literally it could not have been any of us. Anti damn girl! Mion stood there with a dumbstruck look on her face. That was when I heard the principal ringing the bell for school. It was time for morning homeroom. Huh? 
At that moment, for the first time, I realized Mion was sobbing as tears ran down her cheeks. <laughs> you stuck a needle in a thing of mochi. I wanted to console her, but I shut my mouth. I had no need to feel guilty. I left Mion still shaking as I turned around to head for the entrance. Something is not right here. For me, honestly, the needle is like the one thing that's kind of just messing me up. Because if it wasn't for the needle, I would just say, Keiichi's going crazy. That's all I would say. But I don't, like, even, even if he's, like, hallucinating all this stuff happening, and I, first off, I don't have an answer as to why that would be the case, unless he's, like, using drugs, but it's not happening in the narration. But I don't, even if you're hallucinating, like, you don't hallucinate a needle being in something and feeling it in your mouth and feeling it in your hands and, like, it being left behind. I, like, man, that's the thing that's really messing me up right now. I had no idea how troubling it was to make a girl cry. Behind my back, I could hear her muttering. It was a faint mutter as she was speaking to herself. Sokka. Eh? She wasn't saying it to anyone. It was Mion talking to herself. But it was a so sobbing voice that was kind of giddy, cursing tone. I inadvertently stopped and turned back towards her. Ah, was it the why is this a thing? Why is this a thing? Um, that's... That's not anybody's eyes that I know of. That's like we're looking for the Hubble telescope at two different galaxies. She balled up her fists as her tears continued to rain down. <laughs> yeah. That's true, because Mion admitted that the needle actually was a prank. So, either they have absolutely no concept of what an acceptable prank is, which that actually honestly kind of is the case based on the Punishment games, or there's something going on here. I don't... I don't... The more I play this, the more confused I get, but honestly, this is fine. She glared at a spot at the ground with a terrifying yet smiling face, cursing. A chill ran down my spine from that demonic expression. The transformation, Mion's transformation, was different from Rena's. Okay, she admitted it. Retiring this year? Was she talking about Uishi-san? Okay, maybe people are crazy. <laughs> Felt like the air itself had begun distorting. With Mion at the center, the world began to twist and spiral. Bending. Whirling. This was the first time I'd known, no, experienced such a visage. <laughs> 